Chris has dropped off the grid and he has taken off to this wonderful surf trip with a beautiful woman. He's got no phone, he's got no camera, and they're only getting periodic emails uh, regarding what he's doing. And as time goes on, the emails take a downright sinister turn. Chris was emailing, you know, stuff about, you know, not wanting to come back. You know, just paint a picture that he was kind of losing sight of who he was. His messages are not the kinds of things you'd really expect. So they're just, they're wondering, what, what is going on? Show me the truth. This past year and a half was such a nightmare for me. And I even contemplated doing unspeakable things because I was so stressed, angry, scared, and confused. At that point, it was just, this isn't making any sense. This guy, he's lost his mind, you know? Chris's family didn't know what to think because he seemed so up in some of his emails, and then he talks about even contemplating suicide. Yeah, we were replying the best way we could to comfort him, to reassure him, do anything we could. Yeah, they were super worried. I don't know if I'll ever get over some of the things in my life, but this traveling and living on a sustenance level has really started to change how I see things and what matters to me. I'm actually journaling now, and one day I'll share some of the things I wrote down about our relationship growing up and what happened within our family. This disclosure about problems that Chris said that he experienced as a kid, this comes out of nowhere for the family. As far as they knew, he would never experienced any emotional trauma. That was strange to me, because we had a good relationship. There was, what he was saying wasn't true. It was just like someone you know, that was just very conflicted. And so that's when it got really alarming to my parents. You know, when they started getting emails like that about my brother's past and childhood. And, and we started to have suspicions, but didn't want to entertain that train of thought too much because of where it would lead to. I think it was so emotionally hard to even think about. Chris has been gone for several months now, and his emails reflect a lot of mood changes, erratic behavior almost. So in the beginning, he's very happy. Then he reveals that he's very depressed, considering the unthinkable. Then he goes back to feeling very happy and adventurous once again. According to his emails, Chris has now ditched the playmate, and he's on his own. As time goes on, the family gets increasingly worried, and they begin to wonder, are there some clues that we've missed? What would make him turn away from all the things he held so dear? So naturally, it makes sense that they want to talk to his old business partner, Ed Chin. What might he know? Ed Chin was the son of immigrants, and he grew up in a conservative Christian home. And they demanded achievement from him, and that's what he delivered. He was a really good student, he was a good athlete. Pretty much everything he did, he did well. And eventually, he goes to UC San Diego. On paper, Ed Chin was more naturally set up for success. Uh, Chris struggled in school. Uh, he didn't make it through college. Ed was doing all the right things, getting his degree, getting his first jobs. He had sort of the more obvious path to becoming successful in business. Ed Chin was an upstanding member of his community. He was a married father of three. He was the member of a Christian megachurch and was religious, dressed very nicely. He just looked the part of the successful business and family man. Ed and his wife were members of our church here in Temecula, California. Joseph Gray, who's actually run successful companies, and he's a completely legitimate businessman. And he meets Shin in this church group Bible study. I thought he had some skills that ironically were in the vein of what we were looking for as we were starting a new company called Lead Generation Technologies. Listen up, America. Have you been denied credit? Lead generation, if you hear this ad that says, 
reduce your credit card debt, get a new mortgage, and they tell you an 800 number at the end of it. You call in, they take down your information, and then they actually sell that off to companies that are in the mortgage business or in the credit card business. A few examples up here. The Tax 10,000 network has helped people all over America. Call 800 to... So it's really just a way of grabbing customers and selling them off to the Accepted. highest bidder. So call us now. So the more phone calls that are generated by these television ads, the more money your company gets. So this is how Google makes most of its revenue today. They sell clicks online. Right. We're selling phone calls. So Shin is hired by Joseph Gray. Joseph Gray gives him a job, and it's a position of trust. What I really needed was somebody to go out there and develop a marketplace for the leads that we would be generating off of our television advertising. And I felt he could be employee number one. We gave him that kind of title. In early 2008, Ed and Chris, who are both working in the lead generation industry, meet each other and hit it off. And Ed recommended to Joseph that this guy Chris would be, he's a promising up and comer, I think we should bring him on board at LG Technologies. On the sales side, uh, Chris would have been employee number two, but um, I would say that at that moment, Ed and Chris were kind of the face of the company. So I was optimistic. The guys seemed to know what they were doing. It seemed like they were executing and we were growing. Now the key to building a successful lead generation company is finding buyers that are willing to pay big money for those leads, those calls that come into the 800 number. To find those buyers, there is no better place, perhaps on earth, than the convention circuit in Las Vegas. And that's where Ed goes to try to rustle up these buyers. While Chris is back at LG Technologies, Ed is trying to entice these new clients with parties and booze and women. Along for the ride in one of these incredibly lavish junkets to Las Vegas is one of Joe Gray's most trusted employees. He's an ex-Marine called Michael Montgomery. So we landed in Vegas. We get picked up by the Phantom Fury Rolls Royce that was part of the win. They pull us up to the entry of the win. The suite was bigger than any room I've ever seen. Three bedrooms, it had a massage room, its own dining room. Just picture this, one of the nicest hotels in Las Vegas. It is a two-story suite with butler service, its own billiard room, and an elevator. Ed would hire what are known as atmosphere models uh, or arm candy models, and these are beautiful women in Las Vegas who, for a fee, will come and hang out at your party. So it would just look like to Ed's associates, like, this guy's the coolest guy in town because look, he shows up and suddenly these women flock to him. My early impressions of Ed were, he seemed very charming, uh, but then there were sides of him that I really started to see that were not so charming. Ed Shin had two lives. He's got his church-going, upstanding community member life in Orange County, and then it turns out he had a real love of gambling. And he was the type of player who could win or lose $100,000 in the space of a couple hours. I come down and I'm walking through the casino floor and I saw Ed sitting right at the blackjack table. I would suspect that he had about $20,000 worth of uh, chips sitting at the table there. Ed Shin is gambling so much money in Vegas that they comp him that sweet. I heard crazy stuff like that. I felt based on the relationship that we developed, things I had done for him personally, I felt that there would be some measure of loyalty. That Ed might be one of the last people that would take advantage of my generosity and kindness. But it, it all boiled down to one salient point in my mind. Ed was living beyond his means. I, I think I spent the next week working from my home, trying to figure out what's going on here, because we knew there was some fraud that had taken place. I think it was at that moment that I realized, oh boy, we've got a big problem. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.